The Ebertists were a radical revolutionary political group associated with the populist journalist Jacques Hébert. They came to power during the Reign of Terror and played a significant role in the French Revolution. The Ebertists were ardent supporters of the dechristianization of France and of extreme measures in service of the terror, including the Law of Suspects enacted in 1793. They favored the direct intervention of the state in economic matters in order to ensure the adequate supply of commodities advocating the national requisition of wine and grain. The leaders went to the guillotine on March 24, 1794. Rise to popularity The rise in power of the Ebertists can be largely attributed to the popularity of Ebert's newspaper, Le Père du Chêne. This newspaper, which purported to present the frank opinions of Père du Chêne, a fictional working-class furnace maker, had a large following amongst the sans culottes the government funded distribution of Le Père du Chêne to the French armies, a policy arranged by the Ebertist Minister of War Jean Bouchotta in 1793, widened support and sympathy for Ebertist ideas. On May 24, 1793, the newly appointed Commission of Twelve ordered the arrest of Hébert, who had been using Le Père du Chêne to incite violence against members of the Girondin faction. The tremendous public outcry and civil unrest which ensued rapidly resulted in Ebert's release, however, rioting continued, culminating in a series of insurrections. On May 31, a large crowd of sans culottes agitators surrounded the National Convention in an attempt to force its accession to their demands. The dissolution of the Commission of Twelve, the arrest of a list of Girondin deputies, attacks on the rich, and the restriction of suffrage to sans culottes. The commission was abolished, but on June 2nd, the crowds, now supported by National Guard forces headed by Ebertist and newly appointed Commandant General Francois Henriot, returned. Henriot threatened to set fire to the convention if the offending Girondin deputies were not expelled. Ultimately, the arrest of 29 Girondins was decreed, marking the end of the Girondin faction's political power. Following the assassination of Jean-Paul Marat by a Girondin sympathizer in July 1793, Hébert positioned himself as Marat's natural successor in the affections of those who had shared the dead man's ultra-revolutionary beliefs. The Ebertist's popularity grew. Their evident and increasingly destabilizing influence was disturbing to many less extreme revolutionary politicians, including leading Montagnard figures such as Georges Danton and Maximilien Robespierre, the latter of whom especially disapproved of the Ebertists. Atheism, Accusations and Denouncement over the course of October 1793, a number of accusations were leveled against prominent Ebertists by Fabre d'Eglantine, a friend and supporter of Danton. Fabre claimed to have discovered a foreign plot, in which Stanislas Marie Maillard and Anacarsis Klutz, among others, were implicated as agents. This succeeded in casting suspicion on the Ebertist faction. However, Fabre himself was rapidly revealed to have been acting, in part, as part of an elaborate attempt to conceal his own involvement in a scandal surrounding the liquidation of the French East India Company, and his credibility was thereby diminished. In December 1793, the journalist Camille Desmoulins, whose political opinions had long been aligned with those of Danton and Robespierre, began publishing a journal, Le Vieux Cordelier, aimed in part of the discrediting of the Ebertist faction. The journal's title alluded to the fact that the Cordeliers Club, formerly a moderate revolutionary society dominated by the policies of Danton, had become overrun by sans culottes Ebertists and their sympathizers. Desmoulins attacked Hébert for bringing the French Republic into disrepute through his writings, claiming that, when the tyrants of Europe wish, ed, to vilify the Republic, to make their slaves believe that France is covered with the darkness of barbarism, that Paris, 
is peopled with vandals. They reprinted Le Père du Chêne. He also mocked Hebert for having pretended to be a man of the people and a representative of the sans culottes when in fact he had profited handsomely from the contracts his follower, Bouchotta, had secured to distribute Le Père du Chêne to the armies. Hebert, in turn, accused Desmolins of hypocrisy pointing out that his current opposition to violence and extremism stood in sharp contrast to his support for such tactics in a 1789 pamphlet, Discourse de la Lanterne aux Parisiens, which had advocated the execution of those opposed to revolution. The vitriolic exchange continued throughout the winter of 1793 to 1794, ultimately contributing to the downfall of both Desmolins and Hebert fall from power. Following the February 1794 recall of Ebertus deputy Jean-Baptiste Carrier from Nantes, where he had been engaged in mass executions to suppress the Vendée on revolts, the Ebertists attempted to stage a popular revolt, hoping to mimic that which had led to the downfall of the Girondins. On March 4, 1794, Carrier and Ebert veiled the bust of liberty at the Cordeliers Club declaring, according to ritual, a state of insurrection. They had hoped to demand that the National Convention expel Robespierre and his Montagnard supporters. However, the city of Paris did not rise, and the Paris Commune failed to provide military support for the coup. The Ebertists were denounced by Saint Justin Robespierre. On March 13, the leaders of the faction were arrested. Twenty of them, including Chalmet, Clutes, Antoine Francois Montmoreau, and Hebert, were tried before the Revolutionary Tribunal and convicted. On March 24, 1794, they went to the guillotine. Views Ideologically, their violent, anti-intellectual, and ultra-populist views centered chiefly on what historian Simon Sharma describes as an anarchic notion of popular government always armed to impose the will of the people on its mandatories, and took the form of support for unrelenting surveillance, denunciation, indictment, humiliation, and death principal Ebertists, Jacques-Claude Bernard, Jean-Baptiste Noel Bouchotta, François Chabot, Pierre Gaspard Chalmet, Pierre Ulrich Dubuisson, Jean-Baptiste Joseph Goebel, François Henriot, Jacques Hebert, Stanislas Marie Maillard, Antoine François Montmoreau, Jacob Pereira, Charles Philippe Ronson, François Nicolas Vincent, Gallery, Jacques Hebert, Pierre Gaspard Chalmet, François Chabot, Jean-Baptiste Joseph Goebel.